What is the most powerful warship ever launched? Some might say battleships like the Yamato, while others think of Cold War missile submarines. But today, there is no doubt, it is the USS Gerald R. Ford, CVN-78, America's newest nuclear-powered aircraft carrier. She is larger, faster, and the most technologically advanced carrier in the world. Now, the big question, is all that power worth the price or just a waste of money? Let's find out. The story of the Ford goes back to the 1990s. The Navy knew its Nimitz-class carriers were getting old. They were still effective, but they had limits. They needed more aircraft launches per day, more automation, and a design ready for future technology. In 2001, the Ford program was approved. Newport News Shipbuilding began work in 2005. The keel was laid in 2009, and in 2017, the ship was commissioned into service. But the price was shocking. At first, the Ford was expected to cost about $10 billion. By the time she was delivered, the bill had climbed to over $13 billion, the most expensive warship ever built. Why so expensive? Because almost everything was new. Catapults, arresting gear, elevators, radar, even the nuclear reactors. Nearly 70% of the ship's systems had never been built before. With so many first-of-their-kind systems, it's no surprise the Ford struggled at first. The new electromagnetic catapults broke down more than expected. The advanced arresting gear had reliability problems. The new weapons elevators were years behind schedule. But progress came. In 2022, the Ford deployed with NATO allies in the Atlantic. In the following years, she logged more than 12,000 catapult launches and recoveries. By 2024, all 11 weapons elevators were finally certified. She still hasn't seen combat, but that's normal. Carriers are used to deter war more often than to fight one. So what makes Ford different? The Ford was designed to fly about 30% more missions per day than a Nimitz-class carrier. That's 160 sorties a day instead of 120. The biggest upgrade is emails, the electromagnetic aircraft launch system. Instead of steam, it uses magnetic power to launch planes. The ride is smoother, easier on the aircraft, and more efficient. Landing gear got an upgrade too. The advanced arresting gear replaces the old hydraulic system with digital controls. It's safer and designed to handle a wider variety of aircraft, including future drones. Then there are the weapons elevators. These are high-tech lifts powered by magnets instead of cables. They can carry heavier loads and move faster, getting bombs and missiles to the flight deck in record time. Power is another major leap. The Ford carries two brand new A1B nuclear reactors. Together, they generate about 700 megawatts, almost three times the power of a Nimitz-class carrier. That extra power leaves room for tomorrow's weapons, like lasers and railguns. Let's talk defense and weapons. The Ford is a carrier, not a battleship. Her main weapon is her air wing, but she still carries defenses. She's armed with evolved Sea Sparrow missiles, rolling airframe missiles, and several Phalanx Sea Whiz guns. These defenses are designed to stop incoming missiles, drones, or aircraft before they get too close. She also has advanced electronic warfare systems and strong damage control features built into the hull. But the ship isn't perfect. The emails and arresting gear still don't meet reliability goals. The elevators cause long delays, and the ship's cost makes it an easy target for critics. The Navy says the investment will pay off with better efficiency over time, but that's still being proven. Let's talk dollars. The Ford's price tag was $13.3 billion to build. Operating her over 50 years could cost more than $120 billion. The Navy hopes to offset that with reduced crew size and smarter maintenance. But the real savings will only be clear decades from now. Now let's compare the Ford to China's carriers. China has three. The Liaoning, a refitted Soviet ship. The Shandong, China's first home-built carrier. And the Fujian, launched in 2022 and now on sea trials. Liaoning and Shandong use ski jump ramps. That means their jets take off with less fuel and weapons. Fujian is different. It has catapults, likely electromagnetic. That puts it closer to the Ford. But the Ford still has advantages. 
Her nuclear power means unlimited range and unmatched endurance. Her air wing is larger and more advanced, with Super Hornets, Growlers, Hawkeyes, and the stealth F-35C. Fujian's exact air wing is still uncertain, Analysts believe it will carry J-15 and J-35 fighters, but China lacks the decades of carrier experience the U.S. Navy has. That gap is huge. Beyond its groundbreaking launch systems and massive nuclear reactors, the Ford's real advantage lies in how it operates. This is the first American carrier built entirely around a digital command architecture, from its engines deep below deck to the flight control center above. Every major system feeds data into a unified network that tracks performance, predicts maintenance, and lightens the crew's workload. That's the true revolution. The Ford was engineered to operate with 600 to 900 fewer sailors than the Nimitz class, dramatically cutting life cycle crew costs. Over a 50-year service life, that reduction alone could save billions. Her flight deck is another story of innovation. Fueling stations, weapons handling zones, and aircraft parking areas have been reconfigured to minimize taxi times and eliminate choke points, enabling faster turnarounds, tighter launch cycles, and seamless coordination between flight ops, maintenance, and ordnance crews. Then, there's the dual-band radar, adapted from the Zumwalt destroyer program, a cutting-edge blend of X-band and S-band arrays that can track air and surface targets simultaneously with remarkable precision. While budget and complexity trimmed some of its original features, it remains one of the most advanced radar suites ever installed on a carrier. Survivability was another top priority. Ford's hull is reinforced, her internal compartments more isolated, and her power systems layered with redundant backups. If she takes a hit, she can keep fighting, and thanks to her reactors, Holding enough fuel for 25 years, she can stay at sea indefinitely, limited only by food, spare parts, and crew endurance. That's critical in today's strategic environment, as China expands its naval reach and Russia continues projecting power abroad. Still, questions remain. Can the Navy prove that all this innovation will pay off in the long run? Will her system stand the test of time and justify the cost? Only time will tell. So, what do you think? Is the Ford America's ultimate expression of naval dominance or an over-engineered gamble? Let us know in the comments. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell for more deep dives into the world's most powerful military machines.